stop, stop. OK, so this is the film. You know, we saw an extract at the beginning, you know, when I, I show you the couple in front of the poster. So this film is taking, care, it's taking place while the strike of 58, you know, a very important strike of workers in France. And the beginning of the film is in black and white because the beginning of the film gives, puts you in the period, you know, of 1958. And suddenly the colors come. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is workers, okay? And so Jacques Demy asked me to, to, to think that each person, each character, will have a color during the film. And that will be an evolution in the film by the costume. So of course, you know, the red sweater did not exist in the shop. I couldn't find a red sweater in, 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 in wool. It was not possible. So I made it knit, you say? How did you knit? Yeah. Uh, somebody knitted a sweater for me. And the shirt, the purple shirt, I couldn't find a purple shirt that way. So I dyed the shirt. I bought a white shirt and I dyed it in purple. And the green is the same thing. It's to, just to make you understand that sometimes we don't find things in shop, so we are obliged to make them or dye them or change them or, you know, it's, our job is, 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 is it's, it, it's interesting too because we are in the reality where we have to find solutions. Because the filmmaker says, I want, maybe you give me a green shirt. But at that period, you go in the shops and the fashion is not green. The fashion is yellow, so there's no green shirts. So you buy a, you know, an old white shirt and you dye it. And I like the idea that our, you know, our job is to be very practical, you know, to find solutions. Les opinions ne vous regardent pas. Vous savez, je fais ma chambre. Si mes idées vous déplaisent, je déménage. Okay, so this is in the same film, so it's the same character, but it's not in this good um, cycle because the first, the first, in the beginning of the film, he has a yellow sweater, then, and then he has a pink sweater, and then he has a red sweater. So it's very interesting because you know this actor, um, Richard Berry, when he was hired by my father to play in the movie, and my father said to him, look, uh, we're going to do a, organize a meeting with Rosalie for the costume, and so Jacques Demy, the director, said to him, you know, I would like you to wear, you know, like sweaters, knit sweater in very precise color. I would like you to have a yellow one, a pink one, and a red one. And the actor went like, ah, uh, <laughs> this is not possible. I'm going to, I'm going to look like a homosexual. And my father said, what are you talking about? And it's really interesting that, so the actor was feeling really not comfortable of the aesthetic idea of the film, okay? So after the meeting, we go out and everything, and the next day he calls me and says, can I take a coffee with you? I say, of course, no problem. And so he takes a coffee and says, well, I wanted to discuss with you of the costume. What do you say? I'm not so sure it's a good idea, that yellow sweater, you know, I feel like I'm a girl. So, you know, my job is to be precise and to be in the world of the film director. And if I believe he's right, I'm going to be, you know, very tough. So I say to him, yeah, I understand, I understand, but let's try it. So, you know, our job is to be psychologic and to be able to talk to actors if they're anxious of something, of a costume. So, you know, I say to him, look, let's try. If you don't feel well, we will find solution. You know, I mean, uh, okay. Next day, he say, calls me and say, do you say I can invite you to a dinner? So I say, okay. <laughs> so he invites me to dinner. I say, in the middle of the dinner, he say, you know, I thought about that pink sweater. You know, it's not possible. And I mean, uh, it's really, you know, you, you have to understand me. I, I, I go out a lot with girls, and if they see me with that pink sweater, so, you know, so it was really interesting because he, well, he couldn't make it, you know, he just he couldn't make it. So finally we have done, you know, try of a costume and everything and 
finally accept to wear those costumes, you know. But I was feeling he was not so comfortable. Film finished and everything. And this actor became a filmmaker, you know, and we're still good friends. And years after that, he said, you know what? I learned so much on this film. And the fact I was kind of feeling miserable with those sweaters made me understand I was stupid. It's because I was thinking, uh, I'm a sexy boy. I want to go out with girls. What are they going to think with the yellow sweaters? But in fact, they're not going out with me for the yellow sweaters. Of course not. And in the same time, it made him realize what is being a filmmaker is being precise in a project. And the filmmaker wants the actor getting into the project. And after this film, he decided to be a filmmaker. So finally, this frustration he had you know, made him decide to be a filmmaker. And he said to me, you know, this film was the most important in my life because I realized the work that was behind all the film I had done before, there was not a work of design mm -hmm. for the set, for the light, for the costume, for the, the film direction. So it's really interesting. Some actors sometimes, they fight against the costume. They don't want it. You know? And our job is to, to help them to accept it or sometimes to change if we feel it really doesn't work. But in this situation, it was working. It was just his macho ego that was tittle, you know. And when he accepted that that was stupid because it was just not his life, he was not wearing the sweater in his life. Right. He was wearing the sweater in a film. Right. You know, when he understood the difference. Yeah, he was a totally different person. He was, exactly. it was okay. Yeah. OK, this is because in the film, that's the wife of the crazy guy who's in green, you know. And she's, I designed a mink coat. OK, so you say, oh, a fur coat, a mink coat, you're going to buy it in a shop. No, you cannot. Because I didn't want it to be too big. I didn't want it to be too short. I want it to be precise. So you know, our, our job is to be able to design anything, a mink coat, a yellow sweater, a shoe, uh, a tuxedo, you know, and I always say, you know, our imagination can be on anything, you know, and it was the first time I designed a, a mink coat to choose the, you know, the fur, the, the color, the texture, and this is the joy of our, you know, of uh, what we do is we have the possibility to discover a lot of different type of, you know, fur, I did not know a lot about four, and so when you you have to you you learn you make you know information and right. and, and, and I like the fact you always learn, you know we're not static. Right. We we're never static. So this is a film of Jean-Luc Godard. And in the film, there was reconstitution, re reconstitution, you say in English, reconstitution of paintings, big paintings that are in the Louvre Museum in Paris called, no, no, it's, it's, it's a painter called, called recreation, recreation. Uh, it's a painter called Delacroix. And he's in, a lot of his paintings are in the Museum of the Louvre in Paris. OK, and the idea of Jean-Luc Godard is to recreation the, the, the painting in real, you know. So I have done that work. So every material has been dyed. Nothing 
is is like I bought. Oh, you couldn't get the real colors. No, couldn't so have. I couldn't get the real colors of the painting. So everything has been dyed. You know, like the blue is dyed and it's all embroidered hand. The color of the of the woman gown is dyed. All the cavaliers, everything has been dyed. Everything has been done. You know, it's it's really this job is to be into the painting and to redo exactly what is the painting. And the painter did not really do the reality. He already has the work of reinventing what he was mm -hmm, looking at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are step after, you know. Mm -hmm. And we have to redo, you know, like in this film, it was 1985, I think. And the painting, you know, uh, of course, is uh, 18th century. So we, I had to find material that would look like of the 18th centuries, but was not the 18th centuries. So this is really a very interesting job yeah. to recreate right, right, right. something, you know. So Quite a challenge, actually. Yeah. It's a challenge, and, and, and that, right in, that yeah. when I do that kind of work, I feel I'm like the assistant <laughs> of the painter. Right, you right, know, yeah. I'm a little person trying to redo the painting. And this was very difficult because it's a, a painter called Velasquez. And he has done painting where people are too big, too tall, because he had a problem of his eyes. So I had to create on structure. So what is interesting is that you know uh, since the uh, the how I say the structure of this painting was so difficult to do that we construct a structure with a crane and on the crane I did all the drapé I did all the structure of the costume on them on the stage and they could not move and then we we film you know so all the material has been dyed too, you know, the silk and the cottons and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I had done structure under mm -hmm. to support the, the costume. And then with the crane, I went up and I fixed mm -hmm. everything on them mm -hmm. like that. So it took me, I think, four hours and a half, but they couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And one after it was finished, we shot. Yes, so I had the painting. And I recreate the painting, but to recreate the painting, it was it was like a challenge, an architectural challenge, because the, the all the costumes were, the, the painter, you know, he had the, the brush, so he decided it's longer. <laughs> uh, okay, it's longer, but then the, the body is not longer. You know, the body is up there, but the, 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 the bridge goes down. So the, each actor had a structure on them, and on that structure, a kind of a, like a corset structure. And on this, I fold the material and hold it with pins, you know, on them. And uh, since it was like this, high, different person on different levels, with a crane, I would go up and fix everything and go on that inside. And when it was finished, after four and a half, then the film director, Jean-Luc Godard, could film. In the same time, and it was Raoul Coutard, very good DP, you know, very good. DP. It's an incredible film, you know, uh, and this work was really like being at the service of being a little assistant to redo the paintings, you know. So this film is my father's film. Is the same film we have seen, you know, with the outside when they repaint the the, the city in white. Yeah. yeah, and this is a scene where it's the same technique. Is that you use white, and on the white you put colors, like a child. You know, you just put simple colors.
So this is a film I have done in 1988. And it was an homage at my father's film that he has done in 66 that we have seen before, is that to, to use the white and, and the simple colors. So that's why I showed it just after we have seen the scene of Les Noiselles de Rochefort. And of course, the pink dress is inspired by Sid Charis that we saw in La Belle yes, de Mescou. Yeah, the dancer, but yeah. the dancer you know, with the brown gown. And it's always the same thing. When you have a dancer, you have to think how it moves. You know, and the relationship with the costume is very different. So when it's a musical, you, you always have to think that the body has, can, has to move and has to be always lovely. You know? And for me, it's funny to look at that, because it's really, for me, nearly a period movie now, you know, because it's 1988. So the fashion has changed. But I find that you, we still have the smile when we look at those three girls you know, uh, dancing. And the pink dress is really, for me, you know, the, the dress of the young girl, you know, like, uh, you know, it's what, what we, you have in the imagination. Right, right. When, you, when you're a little girl and you, you want a, a, a dress like a teenager. Right. So this is interesting. It's one of my mother's film, and I have done the costume, and it's a homeless, Sandrine Bonner. So I choose this costume because for me it was very difficult to do. Very difficult to be in reality. And very difficult because we needed three costumes the same for the shooting. One costume that would be, you know, in good, in good, uh, good okay. Condition. One condition. One very, you know, beginning she's homeless and living outside. And the third costume like at the end and she's going to die. So the work, continue, continue. The work of that is really, in those type of costume, to have three, three costumes at different state. You know, like the boots are ruined, the pants are totally at end of the life, but she's at the end of her own life. Stop, stop. Um, so this is, I wanted to tell you, it's, for me it's always very difficult to be in those kind of costume, like homeless, people in the street, little workers, little job, because this is very different. You have to respect them. And to respect what they are, to respect the character, but to respect you know, what you see in real life. And when you know, I, I travel, and even in France, you don't need to go out of France. We have homeless too. Huh? Um, I'm always, you know, interested of looking at people, of looking at how they are, how is it in the street? Because sometimes when you speak to a film director afterwards and you told, tell him, you know, oh, okay, you want a homeless? I'm going to do it to you. Look. He said, that's not possible. I said, look, I, this is the costume I saw in the street. You know, and, and sometimes reality is, has more imagination than we can imagine, you know. So this is really a different type of, of costume design. It's really another way of thinking is to be in this character. And, and finally, this homeless, well, the pants was done on measure, and we had three. The sh boots, we had two pairs of boots that were, you know, on measure. So that means they were expensive for a homeless. But yes, they were expensive because I thought it was interesting that the second pair would be ruined and we could open on the back so she would look like middle, uh, middle age homeless. You know? So this is really another, um, uh, another uh, way of thinking. You know, use costume, you know, bad shape, dirty, mud. And we put this, we put real mud, we, we use them with stones, with, you know, we brush them. So this is another part, you know, because the first presentation was kind of, I would say, kind of very lovely. And, 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 and our job is to be in that reality, too, for some films, you know. And to finish this presentation, uh, this is a film that my father has done. And it was very really interesting because one part of the film was shot in black and white with a system where we only could put one color. So it's black, white, and red. So 
So, you know, this is a technique, very difficult technique. In fact, um, the skin is painted in, in green, and it's shot, it, it's sh shot in black and white. Yeah. So the, and then in the lab, the, the only color on the set was red. And it's a negative, at the negative, they, they get the, 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 the skin begins white, and the only color is, is, is red. Okay. So this was the, just to show you a movie. And now we're going to, it's going to be quick, but I'm going to show you a PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is just to give you an idea that the luxury of my job <laughs> is that you can go through so many different periods. You know, like, you know, after doing films, I did a lot of theater plays and I did a lot of opera stage. And the luxury is that in the same year, you can do, a, you know, a Renaissance costume and then you can do a military costume and then you can do, I mean, really so much difference. And it's not because I'm a woman that I'm not able to do a man costume, okay? So I think it's really the difference of what you are and what you can do. And sometimes, you know, when you're a woman, they tell you, oh, you're not going to be able to do war costume. I say, come on, I can do anything. Okay, so Billy Bird, we'll go. okay, this is a stage costume, 19th century, you can go, yes. So just to show you, this is, was a stage opera where there's only men, not one woman. And I was still able to do it. <laughs> this is Traviata. So maybe somebody, some of you know Traviata. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, decided to, um, to do, you know, the character of Traviata had one color and only a huge jewelry in front of her dress. The next one. This is funny. So this is a commercial I've done for Perrier, you know, the, the, water. the water Perrier. And it was directed by a very famous film director called Jean-Jacques Hano. Mm -hmm. And we shot in Nanibi in Africa. And it was prehistoric man's, you know. So everything was fake, like their nose, their teeth, their hair. And everything was in really, I only use real leather and really, you know, little things that I would find there. So wood, uh, little shells, and, th and I'm with him. And we were like in the camping in the middle of Nanibi. It was like weird. So this is a production of Madame Butterfly, and this was a work I really liked to do. It was really graphic, you know, uh, being in Japan and not getting in the culture of folklore, you know, of Japan, but um, trying to, to do a modern Japan. Next one. Next one. Okay, this is Phaedra, it's a theater play. Greek. I, I was yeah. in Phaedra, yeah, a, a Greek play. And it was very interesting because the director asked, wanted all the man characters that be black. And I really worked on leather. And this is not material, it's leather. Everything was in leather. So it was a kind of a challenge so that the leather would look like, like fabric. And the man, you know, where the, the leather was, uh, I wet the leather and put it in things so to shrink it, to, to do it, the, the costume on them. And then I designed the, the jewelry and the arm and, and the sword. Okay, next one. Oh, this is funny, I thought for you, because it's, <laughs> it, it, it's Les Pêcheurs de Perles. It, it's, you know, it's taking, care, taking place, in fact, in the Sri Lanka, in the story, in the real story. So I've, I've done it in Paris, but I only bought saris in the Indian you know, uh, shops yeah. in, in Paris, because my challenge is I didn't buy one material that was French, uh -huh. but in France. Okay, next one. So, you know. So this is uh, a 18, 17th century play. Um, and what is interesting on the dress is this is velvet. And on the velvet, I painted, hand painted, like they used to do it in Venice in the 15th century, Fortuny and 16th century. So it's done you know, like with uh, wooden patterns and they put gold painting and it's on silk velvet. So it's really the technique that they was using at that period. But of course, it's only the technique, then the shape and then uh, I invented it. So this is a stage opera taking care, place in the 1930s. And next one. 
Next one. And this is very interesting. Is sometimes on the stage, you know, when you're back on the stage, I take pictures of the costume I'm, I make just to, to, to remind me. And sometimes it's interesting when you see them next to each other, you understand that they go all together. You know, next one. This is very interesting. Is this is a painter of Berlin, 1930s, called Otto Dix. And he's a very kind of, you know, he painted a lot of parties and people drinking and everything. And this was really my inspiration for those costumes. So I thought, you know, most of the time my inspiration comes from paintings, from art. So in that case, you can see that I did a dress that is inspired by the painting. OK, so this is funny. Next one. This is a stage opera outside wow. in an antique theater. 6,000 person coming to wow. see the play. Next one. Next this one. Is, this is in France? Yes, yeah, in France. Yeah. So this is an opera hype. You know, so it's just to show you that we can do a lot of costume, yeah. like in Bollywood. <laughs> Next one. This is the same place, but uh, it's an opera taking place in Sicily, in Italy, south of Italy. So I decided to do all black and white, continue, except one costume. Look, the dress the dress of the stage that would be in color. Everything would be white and black otherwise. That's the same, you know, it's military um, opera of Wojciech. And this is funny because it's a stage opera of Mexico, you know, uh, Le Chanteur de Mexico. So this is a little bit like uh, for me, it was a little bit an homage at Bollywood. It's like, you know, musical where you have a lot of costume, a lot of colors, and it's very rich and very joyful. Next one. You know, it's, so it's taking place in Mexico. Huh? But I really thought, no, come back. Before, before. Yeah, I really thought for me it was the smell of Bollywood, but it's not. How many, how many people do you have working with you when you do these costumes? I don't know. I have a lot of... The, the costume department, they do costume, but you know, on stage costume, like the big ones, I right. do like 280 costumes. Right, yeah. You know, it goes quick. I've but done, I don't know, I think I counted but once. But you, you hand draw each of the costumes, yes. and then the I stitching. Think I, I, I made a count that I've done 10,000 costumes. Wow. <laughs> this is Tristan Isolt. So, uh, another period. It's just to show you different things I've, I, have, I have done. This is very interesting because this is done hand painted. I hand painted the coat wow. myself. And this is all, you know, dyed and, you know, used and getting dirty. Oh, and this is for you, Bollywood. It's to finish. It's like a little glitter, you know. I can do that too. <laughs> like, you know, dancing costume. So this is sketch, just to show you. you yeah, know. yeah. You saw the film, you know. We had two scenes of this film. So you know, sometimes I begin to work. You know, each character has those co his colors. That's his yellow sweater he wore. Yes, the, <laughs> the yellow sweater he didn't want. Wow. Okay, well, this is so terrific. And this is, you know, the last one I show you. Where it's difficult to do homeless. So I don't know how much time we have, but if you have any quick questions. So, so is there a mic? I don't know how much time we have, but so if you have any quick questions. OK. You know, we can hear, but I'm worried about people at the back. So is there a mic in the audience? Or? Oh, it's OK. I can speak loud. OK. You know, we can hear, but I'm worried about people. First of all, thank you very much, because it was a fantastic workshop. Hello. And you make me proud to be French. Oh, thank you. So of course, I know very well the work of your family and, and yours. But because you said you had to penetrate and to follow you know, the, the wishes, thank you, the wishes of the director. Yes. Um, it's a personal question. Of course, uh, you were very close to your father and to your mother. And uh, did you have any arguments or were you in total harmony when you were working with them or did you have some? Oh, 
never, I, to be honest, I never argue with them working. It's, it's, when I work with, with them, it was not my father or my mother. It was an artist with who I work with. Sure. So the relationship was really on the work we were doing, not on, did you eat well at lunch? <laughs> uh, or, uh, oh, you're in bad mood today. No, I mean, we were artists, you know. So we could argue on an aesthetic or artistic thing. But I was lucky enough that they were so happy to work with me. And I was so happy to work with them that, honestly, we never argue. Total magic and really no, because, you know, it's a, it's a luxury for me to have worked with my fa father and my mother. It's very rare that artists can work together, you know. And, you know, now I don't do too much costume, to be honest. I, I've done a production this summer of a in the antique theater of Madame Butterfly, 400 kimonos. But I don't really do anymore. You know, I do more art uh, direction now, and I do production, and I produce films. But for me, it's, it's what I said in the beginning. I feel so gifted, you know, that whatever you do when you're 20, 25, 30, 35, when you get older now and you're more next to 60, um, it's rich richness that you get into it, you know. So thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm happy you tell me that because I, I always try that the master class are not boring, you know, because costume, it's, it's, it's you know. It's you know. A lot of the clips we saw had uh, music in them. Is that something that uh, excites you more than others? Do you prefer, prefer working in musicals? No, no, in fact, I chose those clips for you here okay. in, in Goa because I thought, you know, it, it would be maybe for some person of the audience that were used more to musical and of the tradition in Bollywood. I thought it was nice to kind of select for you uh, this musical. No, I'm, I'm inspired by anything. This yeah. is the good thing of being a costume designer. You come and see to me and say, I'm going to do a film taking place in a basement and we're going to have only people doing I don't know what. I will say yes. I'm not interested in musical. I'm interested in the relationship with a film director and with what you do. You know, I can design anything. Shoes, jewelry, hats, makeup. I don't care. It's, what is interesting is what you do of what you, uh, we ask you. I get also, many of the clips for Jacques Dami's films. Yeah, and, I really make a selection of very joyful and colorful uh, for you. And because, you know, India is the... Country of color. Yeah. Jacques Tami made a lot of musicals, so yeah. yeah. Yes. But do you have uh, a passion for opera? Yes, I, I, I had the, the chance to work a lot with music. And I guess I have more of a, um, a thank you than a question. I, I remarked that when you mentioned that in the US that they have more of an appreciation for costume designers. Although I've been working for 30 years in the industry, and I've often found that is not the case. No, it's not the case now. I was saying at that period. Yeah. But we create magic in a place that it just shows up. I work mostly in the theater, and you see the sets constructed, you see the lights constructed, you get to dress rehearsal, and the costumes appear. So many people don't realize the work that goes into them, and the depth, and the world, and the storytelling. And I want to just thank you for putting into words what I tell my students every oh, day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the gentleman there, yeah. You've been into film fraternity and you've grown up that way. I wanted to know what were the difficulties in this process of 10,000, designing 10,000 costumes and all. Difficulty? There's no difficulty. It's, it's energy. It's working in a crew with people sewing, dyeing, going to buy uh, the button that is missing. You know, I don't work alone. I mean, I mean like an orchestra chef, you know, and I have uh, people working with me. So there's no difficulty if you have the people with you that you can share your project, then it's no difficulty. The difficulty appears when you have no money, people don't work well, the film director, it happened once or twice for me, you know, that finally is not interested in your work. But this is luxury. We are in a world that is so tough, you know, <coughs> that what we do, art, is necessary to continue our culture. And it's necessary for education. But we are gifted to work in art. I'll put the question again in a different way. Relatively, what were your toughest parts? What's, what? what's, the, what's the biggest challenge? Sometimes the biggest challenge is the time. Because we have less time. You know, we have little time to do 
Like when I do an opera outside, you know, in the antique theater, we have like 300 or 400 costumes, and we have, you know, to prepare this, we have 10 days on the set, but we prepare before. So you have to be really ready when you arrive there. You should not miss anything, you know, I mean, because then it's really, the, the one minute is lost is really difficult. But, you know, if you organize yourself well before, it's okay. Well, it's, it's, it's first this, of course, is I like to do always tests, you know, with makeup and hair and costume with the DP, the director of photography, because sometimes you change things, you know, you, you, and then it gets alive when it's on the set, but all the work before is enormous, you know, when we get on the set, it's finished, globally, you know, I mean, my job is finished when it's on the set, of course, I am there if there is a problem, but all the energy and all the, the, the manufacture and all the design and all the imagination and all the psychology is before. Oh, I usually I, I arrive at the final uh, for the draft of the Check. costume. Check. Well, usually I first I design with no colors. You know, first it's basically what, or maybe I don't design sometimes. You know. And then the colors comes with the production designer and the DP and the filmmaker. And then, oh, I find the dress, or oh, I do the dress. It depends on the project. You know, sometimes it's a challenge to go and buy everything. You buy it and you change a little thing and you dye it and you change the buttons and you know, and sometimes you have to do everything because you don't find it. Because you want a purple dress and you want no button and you want it this and you want it very soft. And what you find in the shops is not purple, not soft, with buttons. So you do it. You know, it's really, it really depends on the project. You know, but the the, the collaboration, uh, usually with a film director and a production designer, is we meet once a week. You know, and we get together working on the project. And then the production designer will say, you know, finally I changed the color of the bedroom because the 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 the, the gray I found it was not good. And finally, it's going to be pink. I say, pink? Okay, so I have to change the nightgown because the nightgown was pink. So they're going to be stupid to be, you know, with the wall and the nightgown. So sometimes it's in that way and sometimes it's in the other way, you know. I will find a nightgown that is really nice and the production designers will say, oh, that's great, good idea. You know, I will change the sheet of the bed so it's nice with your nightgown. You know, so it really is a collaboration. No, I, n I don't own anything. I, I, you know, it's like we say in French that the people that do costume are not well dressed, you know, because we <laughs> have no energy for that. We have all the energy for the others. 